Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm really glad so many of you have joined, considering the fact that there is this Chinese giant speaking at the same time at stage A. So I'm, I'm really happy that anybody who came. I know that everybody is keen on going to China. Uh, OK, so my name is Piotr. I'm, I'm representing Unity. I'm 20 years in this business, in IT and e-commerce. And uh, my goal for today is to uh, talk you through my experience and the findings that I have from my work as a consultant in different omni-channel and e-commerce projects. As you have noticed, lots of us here around use the word omni-channel. We consultants, we like to have a buzzword from time to time. So we can you know, have a draw awareness and then have our clients uh, give them some uh, background and uh, some ideas how to change their strategy so we can discuss it with them. Of course, there's an irony in that. But uh, yes, it is an evolution rather than revolution. So I like to uh, perceive omnichannel as a natural step of the process. And I've been through the changes on the market uh, since I'm very old. I'm a dinosaur of e-commerce, I might say. So what I'll be talking to you today is merely about technology. No technology over the next 20 minutes, I promise you. And, uh, and if you want to build a, an e-commerce strategy, then first you need to know why you want to do this. Um, Samuel Walton, the founder of Walmart, has once said that uh, there is one boss, the consumer. And he has the ability to fire anyone, any one of you, me, you, every one of you, just by, sp by spending his money somewhere else. And these words have never been so true as today. Because the, the ever-connected consumer has the power to fire everybody in the company. So this is our why. Yeah, so we know that our companies, regardless of if you are a retailer, if you are a distributor, if you are a manufacturer, you have to adopt. And this is, this is the motivation. So first, I will tell you about Omnichannel, what's so important in that? W what is this all about? Then I will um, discuss a little bit more about what's so important in uh, digital capabilities, in digital competence, and how to build a team within your company. What are the ways to approach this? Um, next topic will be something about legacy IT systems and integration and other uh, obstacles that you may find when building a commerce strategy and implementing an e-commerce strategy. And at the end, I will share with you um, the framework for building a successful e-commerce and omnichannel strategy for your own company. Before I go, um, please excuse me, I have to tell a few words about who's paying for me being here. Um, so Unity is one of the leading e-commerce IT tech providers in Poland. Um, we deliver e-commerce, CRM, PIM, omnichannel integration solutions. Um, we also build teams for our clients, uh, also from Western Europe. Um, we are over 200 people now, three offices in Poland, in Wrocław, Krakow, Poznań. And, uh, well, those 20 years experience, we have just hit 20 years. Uh, in January, we had a f nice festival in Wrocław. So we work for small, uh, for large and uh, medium retailers. Some of those, I think, might be known to you. Well, so I, as, I, as I mentioned, I like to look at the uh, omnichannel as a natural step in, in the process. So I've, I've been through all the stages on the market. It all started with single channel sales. Then we moved to multi-channel, then to cross-channel, so trying to combine channels to um, stimulate ROPO effect. And then everybody's talking 
about omnichannel. And omnichannel is actually about about customer centricity. So if you really want to do omnichannel, you have to put your client in the center of your business. But not just figuratively, not just not just in your marketing buzzwords and your marketing slogans. It's, it has to really be in the center of the client. Uh, the, the client has to be in the center. And there are two crucial points, two, two crucial factors that enable um, a successful omnichannel strategy. Um, so first thing is uh, having a single view on the client, on the customer. This is, this is a holy grail of successful personalization, of uh, selling more. But this is, at the same time, the thing that most of retailers struggle the most. Everybody knows this is, that this is a low-hanging fruit, but no one actually knows how to do this properly. Um, retailers have multiple databases, online, offline databases, and having a combined single view on the client is a huge pitfall, is a huge challenge to address when building your own omnichannel strategy. The other thing is, uh, is a one central stock. So making your full stock available to your client. This on a technical level, this may not be very difficult, especially if you have a good quality ERP system and warehouse, man and warehouse management systems integrated with your retail chain stores. But what retailers struggle with is uh, to make all the stock available to, to their clients and balance between the cost of delivery, speed of delivery, and the availability. So this is one thing that, another thing that you have to take care about when building your, your strategy. Multiple studies have proven that omnichannel clients spend more money. Um, the, more cl the more channels they use, the bigger the shopping cart. So really, omnichannel is about the share of wallet. It's, it's the, the, the real reason for doing omnichannel is to have more revenue from the same customer base compared to the single channel retailer. And it is actually not a good thing for pure players, right? So because if you're selling only online, then you are limited and you will never get as much money out of your customer base than a multi-channel retailer. Let's now discuss what are the different approaches of building a team inside the company. And most of our clients, they, they just start with a single, simple, single channel approach. So they start an e-commerce store. And uh, the way they do it, first they struggle to decide, where would I place the online team? What's the good place in the company to to, to build an online team. And there are three ways to do this. And I have seen them all in practice, so I can tell you what are the pros and cons of any of them. So the, the one approach, the first approach, is to have a separate team, is to build aside the existing traditional organization. So the top management decides we want to go online. So let's start an online team. Um, the team operates independently aside to the rest of the organization. The good side is that the team is independent. So they can do whatever they want. They can proceed with their online activities pretty fast. They usually also get sponsorship from, from the top management. So yes, they, they get a lot of attention and, and budget and everything. But what's the downside? No one knows who they are. 
the channel conflict is unavoidable and it's, it's impossible to avoid. There are people in marketing, sales, that they has done their business in traditional channels for years and they are not gonna like the initiatives that these online guys are doing. So we're gonna have a channel conflict. And as you know, omnichannel has to change the entire company. And there is no way that these guys from online department will be able to, to you know, discuss with the sales director, with the marketing director, and all any, any cross-department initiatives will, will crash. This, I've seen it sometimes. Um, I'll give you an example. I have been a consultant for Leroy Merleau, which is a Polish leading DIY retailer. They have built the online store with, within six months. That's quite reasonable, right? It's, it's a huge company. But you know how long they, it took them to deliver a pickup in store f functionality, so to make it possible for the clients to pick the stuff they bought online inside the retail stores. It took them two years. Two years to talk the entire organization into doing this. Because there are so many different interests, so many different, different you know, things that have to be changed for doing this and you need to cooperate with people. So if you have an online team which is completely separate, it's always going to be a, a trouble. So the other way around that is to incorporate an online team into an, an existing department, like marketing or sales. Mm. So this way, any initiative that is changing marketing or sales strategy can be done easier because you are closer to, to the existing in structure. The problem is if the marketing director or the, or the sales director has no interesting interest in changing the company. Um, if, if the marketing director sees no potential, sees no meaning in going into omni-channel or e-commerce model, then he's gonna, um, he's gonna be a blocker for any initiative. So he's gonna keep these guys on board. Yes, of course, we will have our online team. They, they do websites and they do some e-commerce stuff, but who cares? It's not the future. The future is in traditional retail. So there is a risk embedded with this, that if those guys are too far from top management, then it's not gonna work as well. So my, the best case scenario and my recommendation as well is to have a cross-department team. So to make, to inject digital competence into any department of the existing organization. Yeah, there's, there are some guys in the marketing, there are some guys in sales, in, in operations, in IT, and they have to work together. So you, have to, you need to have a matrix structure when you have the cross-department team that has its own authority, that has its own budget, has its own product portfolio, and they work together to deliver the strategy, to execute the strategy. I have mentioned the, the support from the top management sometime, uh, a couple of times. Because, you know, omni-channel project is not a typical project. It's not like implementing an ERP system in a company. It's a cultural change. And as any cultural change, it must start from the top. It must be sponsored by the CEO. If you have some crazy people in your company that want to do online digital stuff, but they get no support from the CEO, it's no way it's gonna work. So, omni-channel transformation is the job for the CEO first. 
But sometimes the CEO does not know how. He's uh, been running the company for 40 years. He has 60 years old. So only in that case. Delegation, no, it won't work. The CEO must get his hands dirty, must get on board and must start doing things. So one way around that is to have a coach for the top management. So like an external consultant that uh, has both uh, e-commerce experience and um, business domain experience. If you are in DIY or in electronics or in construction um, equipment, then you need somebody that understands e-commerce and understands your products and your business. And this person can help you um, with building the strategy and then running uh, the company. But in the long run, okay, it is a good start yeah, to have a consultant, but in the long run, what companies usually do, they, they create a position in the company, in the C-level. They hire a C-level executive. He is usually called chief digital officer. And this person's call, call responsibility is uh, well, to manage the portfolio of digital initiatives, um, to identify map digital capabilities and make them strategic priorities. His goal is also to find, to identify top talents within the company, to find people that, that, that are okay with digital um, technologies, that are okay with um, online, um, and to train them, to retain them, to make them sure, make sure they will not go away. So suppose, let's suppose that you have managed to build your team. You now have your team, your cross-department team, and you're starting your, your strategy. You're starting your strategy. A apparently, you will come across some more down-to-earth challenges. Because Omnichannel brings huge challenges to IT. We have lots of new touch points, mobile, responsive, in-store, kiosks. The new touch points come and you have to be you know, agile here because even a fridge can be a touch point at some point. You have huge amounts of data you have to process. Behavioral data, transaction data, you know, retailers gather lots of data. They don't know what to do with them, but they gather them just in case. Um, well, you have the data-driven marketing. So we have to be able to transfer data and process it in, in the real time. And at the end, there are lots of software as a service based services around us that you have to be able to integrate into your existing IT infrastructure. Last but not least, competition gets tough. Yep, so your business users will require you to do things very fast. So the time to market is also very, very important and is expected to be, to be short, right? Because our consumers love to be taken care of. So uh, nighttime sales, uh, door crusher campaigns, retention campaigns, everything must happen very fast. The problem is that with traditional retailers, the IT systems has, has been built around silos. So we have um, in-store systems, we have call center systems, we have website. Those systems were created in different eras. So those are also different generations of systems. And it's so difficult to you know, make them work together. As I mentioned to you, this, this uh, Leroy Merlin case, when they struggled for two years to make the website system work together with the POS system to be able to, for the client to pick up the merchandise in store. 
So the Forrester research, some time ago, they have come up with an idea of a best case architecture for a traditional distributor or retailer. They have proposed it in 2011, some time ago before, but at that time, none of our clients understood what we are talking about. Now they started to understand. So at the bottom of the diagram, you have uh, centralized enterprise systems, customer data management, order processing, product information management, content management systems. You also have some business process management systems like workflows, business intelligence systems. At the top of the diagram, you have touch points. Some of them can be built within your company. Some of them can be outsourced. You have to be very agile here because new touch points will come and go. A, a, a connected car can be a touch point of the nearest future. And you have to be able to respond to this need. Between the bottom layer and the top layer, there is this glue, the integration platform. The solution to this problem, to make this all work all together, is the integration platform, which is built around the software-oriented architecture idea. So the purpose of the integration platform is to make the bottom of the slide to the top of the slide to talk together. And uh, well, it has to be asynchronous. It has to allow you to manage multiple APIs. Uh, and it has to be open to integration to hundreds of different IT systems. So you can use one of the, uh, well, there are f a few players on the market, including MuleSoft, that Unity is partnered with. So a good strategy, would that make you avoid these risks? No. There is no, way, there is no way of eliminating those risks. You have to be ready to tackle them. So the good strategy will help you to ident and they identify the needs, the risks, and develop a plan to tackle those, those risks when they come. Our company and, and myself and, and the group of consultants that I run, we have developed our own framework for providing an omnichannel strategy. And it is based on, on the simple why, what, and how approach. Who of you know Simon Sinek? Yeah, I'm sure some of you know and heard, and heard of Simon Sinek. This is a British American author, motivational speaker, marketing consultant. And he has written a book, Start With Why. And this book is about the importance of the why question. The why question is really crucial when we talk about our motivation. You should only ask what and how after you know the answer to the question why. So, this is how we go with, ours, with our framework. First, we have to make sure we know why we want to do this. So, let's start with market analysis. Let's know what our competitors are doing. Let's know what are the key trends. Let's know what our clients want. Then we have to know what's inside our company, what are the strengths, what are weaknesses, um, what's the, what kind of competence can we have inside our company, what, is, what team can we have, what are the IT limitations. And once we know that, we, we can answer the question why we need to transform. And then we go to what. 
So the business vision is our what? The answer to what? So we develop a vision, a high level vision of the model we want to operate. So we need to know what are the risks, what are the gains, what are the challenges. We need to know the KPIs. We have to define our KPIs. And then we have a model of the omnichannel company. And after that, the last step is to build an IT infrastructure, to de design an IT infrastructure that will be able to address those challenges. So it has to be scalable. We need to know requirements to the core IT systems that will be f forming this infrastructure. And this project will last for years. Omnichannel transformation is not a, is not a half a year job. It's not a half a year project. In most cases, in large companies like, like retailers, it takes years to change. So there is no point in building a very detailed plan. You just build a roadmap, and then you start agile development. OK. so. The things I would like you to remember from what I've just said is that, first of all, omnichannel is not a, is, is not a brainer. I mean, for most retailers and distributors and, and manufacturers, omnichannel is the way to go. It's a no choice strategy. Because it is about the share of wallet, if you want to sp you want to compete on the market, you have to be able to address the needs of your clients. And regardless of if you are a retailer, distributor, or manufacturer, a crucial factor for doing omnichannel is a team. And you need to find a way to identify talented people within your organization and give them a background and make them a team, make them work together, cross department so they can deliver for you. The CEO or the top management must be engaged, must be involved in the project, and must get his hands dirty. Without the support from the top management, it will never work, believe me. The IT infrastructure will be a challenge, definitely, but there are ways to tackle this. And last but not least, I really recommend you to start with why. To start using the simple framework and follow the framework and then start doing it. If you want to discuss your challenges and if you want to know more detail about what we do and how we do and what are my, my experiences with omnichannel projects, please visit me. I'm at stand A16. Unity Group. Thank you very much for listening to my speech. It's been a pleasure. Have a great day.